Well, hello everyone. I am very glad to be here today. My name is Louis Boulanger. And today I want to present to you a small part of my PhD thesis that I'm doing at the University of Grenoble Amp in France uh, about a very interesting case uh, that has lots of uh, rust in it. So let's get started. Uh, so for some context for my thesis, I'm working with uh, persistent memories. They are the kind of memories that keep data uh, when you lose the main power source of the system. For example, uh, a hard disk drive or SSD drive, they are persistent memories in a sense, because if you turn off your computer, your files are still in there. And for reasons I don't really have time to go into today because of the time limit, um, interacting with persistent memories in a way uh, as if you were using it to allocate stuff and use it as kind of like a, a persistent RAM of sorts, it's very complicated, and usually people try to use libraries and do not try to do it themselves. And so as part of my thesis, I uh, wrote Tainite, which is not published yet, but hopefully soon will be. It's a transactional persistent memory programming library that was written in Rust. And it has a custom standard library um, that provides uh, persistent versions of types that you would find in the standard library, like a persistent box, a persistent vector, etc. So as part of my thesis, I wanted to have an application that I could use to showcase um, my uh, library. And so the goal I had in mind was to um, create an embedded application uh, and to work in the world of embedded. And the goal here was to have a very small system with very limited resources that would be able to use lots of persistent memory as its own uh, RAM of sorts in order to allocate and do calculations and things. And so the setup that I have actually here, I don't know if you can see it, it's a Raspberry Pi Pico here. Um, it has 264 kilobytes of RAM, but attached to it, I have an SD card module with a 32 gigabyte SD card in it. And so the goal was uh, to be able to use 32 gigabytes of RAM in the um, in this system in order to well, augment the system and showcase Tainite. The problem is that Tyanite, uh, developed on Linux, um, usually uses uh, memory mapping in order to map persistent memory into the uh, address space of the program, but we don't really have that on an embedded system, at least this one. Also, the CPU is 32 bits, so at maximum, um, I don't remember, I think I got the number right, but it's maximum 4 gigabytes of memory in your address space, which is way less than 32 gigabytes that you would want to have here. So in order to find the solution to this problem, um, we need a bit more context about Tyanite. You can't really store regular pointers in persistent memory um, for many reasons, but a big one is ASLR, uh, Address Space Layout Randomization. I hope I got the acronym correctly. Um, it just means that the pointers, when you start a program, the start address of your allocated uh, data will be randomized. And so if you store something in a pointer in a persistent memory and you restart the program again, the pointer will still be here, but it will point to nothing. And so this is not good. So in Tainite, we have our own persistent pointers that are hard-coded to 64 bits. And we have a bunch of abstractions uh, over that. We have a persistent memory allocator and data structures that work with that. So in short, we do control persistent memory accesses. And this is important because our solution that we had for, for the embedded system is to have a sort of intermediary between Tainite on one side and the SD card on the other side. And our idea is to have a cache, kind of like a CPU cache, if you know um, what that is. So if you know how the CPU cache works, uh, if the cache becomes full when you try to fetch things, you will have to evict something. And usually in most heuristics, you will evict the oldest and most stale block. But in our case, when we try to implement this, we encounter a small problem. So when can a block be evicted? And we will showcase a problem with block eviction here. This is a uh, mockup of what you would write with Tainite to interact with persistent memory. You have a transaction. A transaction is a block of code that is supposed to execute atomically, meaning everything inside will succeed altogether or all fail together. In another sense, if the closure of the transaction fails at any point, every single memory operation that was performed before the fail must not have happened actually. They must be undone. 
So here, when we do a transaction, we get a reference to the root of the persistent memory, which is a user-defined structure that the user chooses to store in persistent memory. In our case, it's just a persistent box of an integer, and we have a reference to it. So this means the integer is stored in a uh, in the persistent memory itself. So for the fun of it, just like that, let's get a reference to the U32, which we get by dereferencing the root twice, first for the reference and second for the p-box, and then we get a reference to it. But let's just not do anything with the reference at all. And we're going to actually do a bunch of other things with the persistent memory and make the cache do some work. And then at the very end of the transaction, we want to print the number. So what can happen here? The problem here is um, if you do a bunch of operations in persistent memory, you will fill up the cache. And once the cache is full, you have to evict something. As I said earlier, you evict the oldest, least used blocks in uh, persistent memory, which will be uh, eventually this one, the one that um, the, uh, the root has uh, the data to. And the problem is we're going to try and print it afterwards, but we can't really detect that the block is out of the cache now because our CPU, ca our cache, sorry, not CPU cache, our cache is in software. We developed it, it's Rust code. But this is a reference to a U32. We don't really control this type, um, Rust does. And so we can't really detect that we um, try to print it. And so we have to do some work uh, earlier in the, um, in the program in order to say this should not be evicted. And so uh, we have to go through our library and make sure that when you dereference something that allocates into persistent memory, we mark the data as new so it cannot be deallocated. And this ties into the design of the cache. It has two main um, areas. On the left here, we have the cache storage, which is just a unmovable place where we store the data for the, each block. So for example, at index zero here, we have the block number six from an SD card. On index one, we have block 21 and so on. These are all arbitrary. Um, and then on the right here, we have the logic of the uh, cache, which is a priority linked list. Each node in black on the bottom here are actually doubly linked because you have a next pointer and a previous pointer. And they have a reference to the index of which the block they represent. And also you will see that we have two sets of um, of uh, head and tail. We have the high priority one, which represents the nodes that should not be evicted. And we have the low priority ones, which represent the ones that are fair game and can be evicted. So for example, if we say that the cache is full here and we want to add something to it, uh, we will need to evict something. And in our case, it's going to be the tail of the low priority here. And so this is the block at index n. Index n says, oh, it's block three. Well, bye-bye, block three. Uh, you get evicted, and a new block will get into its place. And it's important that it's in, it's in place, because otherwise, uh, the pointers are pointed to this data. This is uh, where our pointers will point to. Uh, they will get moved around, and it's not good. We should not do that. And so in the end, we will move the nodes around so that at the end, the uh, new block is now the head of the low priority um, queue. It's now block seven, I just decided uh, the number and everything gets shifted so that the previous one of the old tail is this one. And so now that we have that, we can successfully use Silight in an embedded system. And we have two proof of concept. I don't really have time to do a live demo here later if we have time during the other sessions. Uh, I have a toy file system that we implemented. I say toy because it, mainly uses the data structures that you would usually find in a non-persistent context, like a vector or a tree, but they are persistent. And so when you interact with it and you shut down the system and you restart it again, they are all still here in your memory and you can access them uh, perfectly fine. And so this showcases that we it's very easy to program with persistent memory with Dynite in our case, because this is mainly just vectors and trees. Oops, sorry. And uh, um, we have a, a benchmark uh, that we've made just to showcase that we are using lots of memory compared to what is currently available with the uh, Raspberry Pi. It's just a gigabyte of integers that we store in a big vector, and then we sum them together. And you can definitely interrupt uh, the system by just unplugging it from the main power source, and you can restart it, and it will restart where it left off. And so I think it's a very interesting benchmark to have. And so this is the end of my talk. I hope I wasn't too late or too early. Uh, I thank you for listening. I hope I wasn't too confusing and I'm really happy to answer any questions now or later in the Q&A.
thanks a lot very much for for your talk and and staying well in time. Uh, there are no questions from the Q and A yet. Uh, please, everyone attendees, use use the Q and A for questions. Um, I have in the meantime a question. So, how does the Rust memory model specifically help you in de devising the uh, cache manager, persistent cache manager? I think very common C plus plus could you design similarly in C plus plus. Um, I'm I'm not sure I understood your question. If I can reformulate, is how does the Rust memory model affect the yes. way we designed it? Yes. Yes. Um, well, first, it's it's a uh, we work in the embedded context, so um, lots of things are going to be unsafe by default due to the way you interact yeah. with embedded stuff. Yeah. Uh, for example, when you want to do a timer, you have to do lots of unsafe to access the correct registers and the CPU and stuff. Uh, in our case, uh, there's lots of unsafe involved, so we have to bypass it quite a bit, but. Otherwise, it's not too bad. We don't have to do lots of cursed things in Rust, but it's still something that uh, you can't really do in safe Rust very easily because you were going to uh, create pointers to data that is not technically there and you have to uh, basically tell the compiler, I trust me, there is an integer here. It's not just random memory that I just created into a pointer. Uh, so yeah, there is a, a, a battle of that, but we are careful with it. Okay, that's great. Thanks a lot. That's very interesting. Uh, let me see if there's any questions in the Q&A now. Uh, yes, there's one. Is the data structure of the cache queue somehow protected against corruption in case of power loss? E.g. inconsistent um, next pointers. Yes, it's a very good question. Um, uh, we have lots of things that we do to prevent uh, data corruption and to ensure what we call data consistency in Dianite. Um, for my uh, use case here in the embedded system, um, all of this here um, is kind of uh, in RAM, actually. Um, the cache storage here, I didn't really explicit it, and maybe it was a mistake on my, on my part, but uh, these blocks here, are all stored in RAM, which means that if you um, if you just unplug your system, it's just going to go away. And it's just because it's a cache and not the actual memory state that is present in the um, SD card. And the actual SD card and the data in the persistent memory is protected against crashes due to the, how it interacts with Dianite, which uh, is made to withstand such conditions. 